This week, the MLW Tour invades Lake Norman. I feel like it right there. And the hometown oh. heroes mount an awesome defense. That's a Lake Norman boat. Oh, that's a bad. Yeah. I'm having fun. Local knowledge becomes a key yeah. factor in the battle. That is what we call peak squad. But the visitors aren't afraid to go for broke. I gotta get busy. I hope I can outsmart them. I gotta get them big today. Welcome to the second stop on the FLW Tour, this event presented by the National Guard. Hi everybody, I'm Jason Harper. Here we are in North Carolina at legendary Lake Norman, just a stone's throw from the city of Charlotte. For the last couple of days, 150 pros have been out on the water battling it out, literally for every single ounce. Today though is a day of reckoning, it's cut day, we narrow the field from 150 down to the top five. Going into the day in first place is local pro who's been red hot, Brian Thrift. He's finished in the top five, the last two events with FLW Outdoors. Now he only has a two pound lead. The question is for Thrift, can his local knowledge help him stay on top or will the lead continue to change hands? Right behind him, within striking distance, you've got pros like Andy Montgomery, Jason Christie, Anthony Gagliardi's in 10th place. Anyone could make a move on this day. No question, they're all gonna be fighting it out to see who has what it takes to make the cut. You know, normally here at Norman, we're here in April, and it's a full-on spawn by then. We've had a cold weather this year all throughout the country, so Norman's a little bit behind. We've had a lot of rain, so it's muddied up the water. It's actually made the fishing really better uh, for the pre-spawn. It's a lot, of, a lot of good quality fish being caught this week. The winner of this tournament, I mean, might need 15 pounds a day to actually take home the check. That's a lot of weight for Norman. I've lost one good one each day, which here is a nightmare because everything is ounces. Here. I see no reason why we can't catch a bunch of fish today. When you look at a fish, his brain is what? I don't know, the size of a, what, a pea or a marble? I don't really know. And I hope my brain's a lot bigger than that. And I hope I can outsmart them. Yamaha pro Brian Thrift comes into the day with a two pound lead, but despite being a local favorite, his local knowledge hasn't always helped him. I've been fishing here for probably 10 or 12 years and I got a lot of history and that's kind of what hurt me in the past tournaments. The last two years we've been here, they've been laying on the bed, so it's kind of hurt me because I've run around and tried to catch post spawn fish instead of trying to catch the bedding fish like I needed to do to do good. And, then this year we kind of hit it in a pre-spawn deal, so kind of comes back to a little local advantage. Just knowing where the brush piles are and the type of stuff they get on before they come up to spawn. Another local favorite is Andy Montgomery from Blacksburg, South Carolina. He and Thrift have often fished this lake together. I mean, he's one of my best friends. We've grown up fishing together. We've probably fished. 50 team tournaments on this lake together. Yesterday I caught a lot of, a lot of my spots off these pole docks. I'm fishing these docks really fast, just trying to catch the aggressive fish. If he don't bite the first cast or two, I'm going to the next one. Missed him. It ain't really good for me. Took my freaking chunk. Stole half my chunk. Another two pound spot. He took half my chunk off to start with. I picked up my other jig and threw it in there and got him. Andy's one of the best around with a jig. If it stays sunny like this, he's gonna be hard to beat. I'd like to see us both make the top five. I wouldn't care who won then. <laughs> Oh, this is him. Yeah. 
Oh yeah, come on, man. Good God. Is that right, man? Now that's a spot. That fish there is huge. That means we don't need but maybe one, two more bites and we make the top five. That's a couple thousand dollar fish, definitely. Unlike Brian Thrift, many of the other anglers in the top 10 haven't been able to find the big bites. Hadn't really, you know, caught anything yet, so um, we're still just pecking away, trying to get that three or four pounder what we need. And, you know, this lake is pretty much, if you don't get that bite, you're just gonna slide a good ways. It's 11.30, I got, I got a limit. I caught a limit pretty early. Not quite as early today as, as I had them yesterday, but within the first, hour and a half or so. They're not quite as big today. Today I've, I've caught several, but they hadn't been size. I've caught a lot like this today. Uh, I think if I keep messing around in here, I can Oh, well, maybe get a good bite and have a shot tomorrow. Coming up on FLW Outdoors, the cut day weigh-in. Yeah, 16 .9 yesterday, not quite that good day. And a look at life on tour. Life on tour for me is everything that it means to be human, all roll into one. I'm gonna tell you, there's two local guys in this thing, Brian Thrift and Andy Montgomery. I think it's gonna have a battle royal between them two, so y'all stick around and see what happens here on FLW Outdoors. FLW Outdoors is brought to you by National Guard, always ready, always there. Chevy, every model is backed by a five-year, 100,000-mile powertrain limited warranty. Ranger, still building legends one at a time. Lowrance and the HDS High Definition System with structure scan add-on option. Goodwill, donate, shop, and support your local Goodwill. And by Evan Rood. With three years, no maintenance. Spend more time on the water. Ranger Pro Jason Christie led the field after day one, but fell to fourth on day two. He's made some adjustments to stop the downward slide, but so far, the bite's been tough. What time's that GPS say back there? 9.47. Golly! You gotta get busy. I think the main thing for me is this water, I mean, even though it's dirty for Lake Norman, it's still not what I, not what it was in practice. It's just every day, it's just getting clearer and clearer, and I'm having more and more problems every day catching fish. You know, if I can, if I could just get a bite or two just to key in on something, then I have no problem staying here all day in this creek. That's the deal with tournament fishing. That's always the question: is do you stay or do you go? I'm staying. I ain't running all the way up the river for one place that might be a boat on and might have cleared up. I'm gonna stay in here, fish. I don't need to catch 50 fish, I just need to catch five. Coleman, Alabama native Greg Pugh started today on the bubble. Like many, he started the day looking to catch a limit of spotted bass and throwing a shaky head. Here at Lake Norman, I, I would say probably 95, 98% of the guys that's here are throwing a shaky head worm. What happens is this bait will stand up on its head like this, and this tail will step in the, will stand up in the air. And as you can tell, I've got the tail chartreuse, and spots really like that chartreuse tail, but it'll stand on its head and it just kind of bounces across the water, bottom of the water like this. And you don't keep your line tight. Your line's got kind of a little bow in it. You want that bait just to kind of walk right across on the bottom like it's on top of his head. And uh, them fish, they really like that action. He's 15 inches long. It don't weigh a pound and, pound and a half, but you gotta have five to be able to call. With cut day half over, Greg's gonna have to work hard to find the bigger fish that he needs. 
Fellow locals Brian Thrift and Andy Montgomery already have healthy limits in the live well and are looking to make the cut. But there's still plenty of time for anyone in the top 10 or beyond to make a big move. In the final hours of fishing, heavy rains moved in, making for a very wet weigh in. Oh, well, it was a little bit better today. A little upset about my stumble yesterday. I can't afford those on a lake like this where everybody's catching so many. Tough day so far for me. I didn't get a limit until 2 o'clock yesterday. I had my 8.15. I just didn't have any good opportunities today. How'd it go, Zig? I'm ready to go back to Oklahoma. Jason Christie took a one pound lead on day one fishing in muddy water. But as it got clearer, he wasn't able to sustain his advantage. He ends up in this tournament in 17th place. This lake's had my name. You know, I finished way down both years I've been here and so this year I'll get some money and you know a good finish and some good points and get back to Oklahoma. Evan Root Pro Greg Few was in the running starting the day in fifth place but struggled to find the kicker fish. 17 puts him at 32 15 he sits in six spots you know, a big round ball great job today. I caught a lot of keeper fish today I just couldn't get the big bites today so I tried real hard and that's the thing about fishing that makes you want to go again is you don't win you keep trying and trying and trying. Because the bass are holding in their traditional staging spots, they were hard to find in practice. As a result, local knowledge of these spots has been a big advantage. Conover, North Carolina native Brian Travis has been putting that knowledge to good use. I had 12-7 for today and I'm in fifth place. I'm happy with what I did. I fished my strengths and um, you know, I have no regrets. A dark horse that's been tearing up the leaderboard is Alpine California native Rusty Seleski. Day two saw Rusty jump all the way from 69th to 17th place. His stringer today has pushed him into fourth place and given him high hopes for tomorrow. I'm feeling really good about the, the potential in that area. I mean, you still got to make him bite, but I know there's enough in there to come in with 16, 17 pounds. I had 18 pounds of one day in practice in there. So. I know I can do it. Despite catching two pounds less than he did yesterday, Andy Montgomery's 12 pound one ounce limit was enough to keep him in third place. Rusty Transigir from Hayhira, Georgia fished consistently this week and started out today in second place. 12 pounds, 15 ounces, put it at 40 pounds, eight ounces. Rusty, you sit in second spot. Great job today. Thank you. It's just uh, making that one lucky cast. There's, there's a few good fish in there. Maybe I can get one. Brian Thrift has eight top 10 finishes as a pro angler on the FLW Tour, but he's never won an FLW Tour event. Before he can do that here, he's going to need to make the top five to keep fishing tomorrow. So, so we today, he's got five here today and 16 yesterday. Not quite that good today. Five to weight, 16 pounds, even getting total off. 45 pounds, you're there again, Brian Thrift. The curveball on this lake is the big fish just don't bite. I mean, you can always catch little fish, but sometimes the big fish seem like they don't live here. And you can go fish the same stuff you've caught a million four pounders out of all day long and not catch a fish over two pounds. This, this lake can do that to you. It's notorious for that. You guys ready to see who's gonna win this on the co-angler side? Yeah. On the co-angler side, 22-year-old Brandon Polinick from Rathdrum, Idaho is in the lead with just one angler left to weigh in. We need 10 pounds, two ounces, and today's weight. Eight pounds, 10 ounces, getting a big round of applause. Brandon is your tournament champion. Great job. Thank you. Among the 145 anglers heading home today is veteran pro Jim Moyna. With three top 10 finishes at Lake Norman under his belt, Jim was one of the favorites coming into this tournament. He didn't make the cut, but did finish in the money. We caught up with him for a look at life on tour. Life on tour for me is everything that it means to be human. It's just, it's like all roll into one. You know, I, I always wanted to be a pro fisherman since high school. And I remember uh, my counselors at school and teachers and that, they'd be like, what, you wanna do what? But I've been at it now for 15 years. The mind game is huge in tournament fishing. And the focus is really key. Cause you never know what tournament you're gonna do good in, which one you're gonna do bad in. You, you can't take it for granted. It's really easy to let your body go. So I try to eat good food, and I'm always constantly reminding myself to stay hydrated. And it really affects me, because you become really indecisive, really indecisive. You gotta be competitive in order to do this. Going out and trying to beat all the other guys, you know darn well they're just thinking the same thing about you. That's really cool. 
if you want to be a pro bass fisherman, then by golly, make an effort to be a pro bass fisherman. It'll be some kind of journey of some kind, and no matter what happens, I don't think you'll regret it. I mean, I, at least you tried. And who knows, you might be a big success too. Coming up, while Transigear trudges up the river. We got idle a long ways across a couple sandbars and some pretty shallow water. Others get on an early bike. There he is. Oh. Stay tuned to FLW Outdoors. It don't get no better than that. Welcome back everyone to Lake Norman, the second stop on the FLW Tour. After three days of tough competition out on the water, we're down to just five. Going into the final day, the top story has been local dominance. So many times a home lake advantage can turn into a curse, but this time around, no doubt, it has absolutely been the key, and it's allowed not just one, but three locals to be in the top five. Local favorite Brian Thrift continues to hang on to his day three lead, while Lake Norman veterans Andy Montgomery and Brian Travis round out the top five. So while the locals are dominating, don't count out the two Rusties. Rusty Transigear from Hay High, Georgia has done very well fishing shallow in a remote flat. Meanwhile, Rusty Seleski from Alpine, California has charged up the leaderboard, going from 69th on day one to fourth place on cut day. It's still anyone's game, and no doubt they're all gonna be fighting as hard as they can right up until the very end. Uh, Saturday morning, final day. Uh, I plan on doing the same thing I've done the last three days. Uh, I'm going to fish a depression in a lily pad field way up the river. You know, the weather's changed a little bit. It's got cold this morning, and it could uh, it could be a little tougher today. The key's catching large mouth, and I'm hoping with the sun shining today, uh, it should be pretty good. i got to catch them big today. You don't even have a chance. It's, it's going to be tough to catch Brian. It's possible, but uh, it's a long shot. With very few fish up on their spawning beds, anglers have had to work hard to find bass in their staging spots. This gives a decided advantage to pros with a lot of experience on Lake Norman, like Yamaha pro Brian Thrift. There he is. He's a little guy. Fish number one is a keeper. We are on the board. Not a big one, but we'll take him. Defying the conventional wisdom that Lake Norman is a dock fishing lake, Transigear has been successful fishing a remote flat with a shallow running crankbait. 32 minutes, so we've almost made it. Just a few more miles to go. We've got to bend up in that little, there's a big sandbar right across the mouth of the slew up there. We got to idle a long ways across those docks there. And it's a long idle through here. There's a couple sandbars and uh, some pretty shallow water. It's really a depression in the lily pads uh, with a real dark bottom that warmed up. There's been some osprey and some eagles down here diving on some shad first thing in the morning. It's uh, been pretty fun to watch those. While Rusty Transigear is still motoring up to his spot, Rusty Seleski's day is already underway. Every day they bite somewhere else. It's just really random. I'm just catching them up in the shallows. Water's been coming up a little. I've been able to get a little further back every day. I keep thinking that's going to make them want to move back there, but I haven't really noticed them. There's one. There's a good one right off the bat. Nice little, I don't know, two and a quarter, two and a half maybe. Great start. Fired up. So I knew right off the bat that I was doing the right thing and that there was still some fish left to catch in there. That's what I was, one of my biggest worries was did I run out of fish or is there still more to catch? This is the best looking little stretch right here. If you look at it, it's uh, got a little ledge and a little bit of mud and two or three laydowns. And I have not caught a keeper here since practice. And now I just caught a good one here. So that's what I mean. You just got to keep fishing. 
Until Rusty Transigir manages to get there, he won't know if he's made the right decision to stick with his flat. I've been having to use a block every day under my trolling motor just to jack my trolling motor up. A little tip for you at home, you should use your stiffest pole to hold the trolling motor down at the highest jacked up place with a buoy marker and maybe you can get through a foot of water. These rangers will float pretty, pretty, pretty shallow water and it's a good thing. I'm going to start this morning with this little crankbait. This is shallow running, little baby one minus. Uh, it's really about a foot and a half, two foot right here. Uh, two and a half at the most. Uh, in this whole flat, really, this is probably the deepest little edge right here. Andy Montgomery's been consistent throughout the tournament, but he'll need to find the docks with the big fish if he wants to close in on Thrift's seven pound lead. Here comes Brian across the lake. How much you want to bet he's trying to get in this pocket? I mean, we've fished together for 10 years, so, I mean, we know pretty much the same thing. This is, this is one of the best pockets on the lower end, as far as catching spotted bass. We both know that, so. Took a while, we finally got a decent spot. Took me two hours to get number one. Still to come. Well, look at that big old pig. Rip bags two in back-to-back -back casts. That was huge. This one is not huge. But Travis goes four for four. That's a fish. There he is, by God. <laughs> the final day of fishing is underway here at Lake Norman. It's the second event of the FLW Tour presented by National Guard. Local Brian Thrift from Shelby, North Carolina leads the pack by five pounds and already has a keeper. Fellow local Andy Montgomery and Alpine California native Rusty Seleski are hard on his heels, each with a keeper in the live well. Brian Travis in fifth place is hoping his local knowledge will translate into the big catches he needs to challenge the leaders. Started here yesterday. About the fifth cast of the four pound. <laughs> Let's hope brother or mama is here. That's a fish. Got one. I got one. I don't know how big he is. Ah, oh, there was a boy. He's not a monster, but he makes me happy. Thank you, Lord. If anybody read the FLW magazine, that's one of my superstitions. I never get the net out until I hook my first one, so I spot it's a little scramble there. But now the net stays on the deck of the boat all day. Oh, that's a big fish. That's a big one there. Uh, maybe not. It's just, a, uh, it's just a keeper spot. Oh, barely. Whoo! Thank you, Lord. People don't believe in answer prayer. If I can tell you that right there's an answer prayer. There he is. Oh, he'll keep. I'm having fun. There he is, my God. <laughs> Unbelievable. I got him fired up. Fat belly. Large mouth. This right here, folks, is unbelievable. You lay in bed dreaming of making the final cut, then you come to your first place and catch four in about six or seven casts. It don't get no better than that. With a whole day of fishing ahead, Brian's still got plenty of time, <laughs> but he'll need to find some big fish to reel in the leaders. Brian Thrift in first place and Andy Montgomery in third have been getting attention for their style of fishing on Lake Norman. Everybody that's watched us this week has been amazed by how fast we fish. We cover a lot of water. We fish a lot of docks in a day. 
Lake Norman, it's a, it's a fairly big lake. I mean, it's, it's 32,000 acres, I think, and it's got so many little coves and pockets and little ditches, and they're all full of docks. So this lake is definitely a dock fishing lake. You know, we just try to mow down as many docks as we can in a day. That's what we grew up doing, skipping jigs under docks. Our philosophy is if he's under there, we're going to get him on the first cast. We know so many places, so many docks, it's got brush piles and stuff on it. It just works out really good for us. Yeah, so far so good. Everything's going to plan. Well, if the big ones will just bite this afternoon, we'll be all right. The lack of local knowledge hasn't hurt Rusty Seleski. This is his first time fishing Lake Norman, but he's been tearing up the leaderboard. His practice period was a key part of that success. My practice partner, the guy I travel with, Brett Hyatt, he, uh, he's been here about four or five times. So it was a big help. Bringing him in. Oh, he's bigger than that. Easy boy. That's how you like it right there. Yeah. Not too many of them been getting it like that. Number two, but he's a little one. If I gotta bring him to the scales, I'm not gonna do very good in this tournament. The toughest thing about fishing the way me and Andy are out here is the mental aspect of it. I mean, you gotta know that sooner or later you're gonna get that big bite and you might hit 10 or 15 places and burn up 45 minutes and not get a bite, but then when you pull on that one place and make that one cast as a five pounder, it makes it all worth it. Moses. That's what we're looking for. Look at that big old pig. God almighty. That is what we call pig squat. <laughs> Look at that. Yeah. I found this one bank in the back that was three to four feet deep and everywhere else it was only two feet. The first day of the tournament, I ran in there and I caught a couple and I went in there the second day and caught one or two. I didn't go back the third day because I was going to try to save it for today. That was huge. That was huge. This one is not huge. So we'll see if he's full. He's 14 inches, that's the limit right there. How about that, a four pounder and a keeper on back to back cast. That's pretty strong. Dude, that is the ugliest crankbait I have ever seen. As the anglers hunt for the big largemouth bites, choice of bait plays a key role. It's an absolute must that it's a hand-tied jig. Welcome back to Lake Norman, North Carolina. After three days of competition, local knowledge has emerged as a key factor. Three out of the final five are local pros. Yamaha pro Brian Thrift from Shelby, North Carolina. Conover, North Carolina native Brian Travis and Andy Montgomery from Blacksburg, South Carolina. Challenging the local favorites are Rusty Transigir from Hay Highway, Georgia and Rusty Seleski from Alpine, California. Earlier this morning, Ranger Pro Brian Travis caught an amazing four keepers in a row. Here he is to tell us about the bait he used. Today so far, my key bait's been a, been a shad wrap. I, I chose this off-colored, or the copper-colored shad wrap because the water in most of the lake up here right now is kind of a, a stained color. It's good this time of year because it's got a tighter wobble. You don't want a bait that's got a lot of wide wobble in it right now. 
the shad are still moving kind of slow and the shad wrap's got the perfect wobble for early spring pattern. The reason I chose this today, we had a cold front last night and uh, I decided to start off on some rocky banks uh, that hold heat. And 90% of, you know, what a bass is trying to eat on that rock is a crawfish. So, you know, it's trying to match the hatch, so to speak. Um, this shad wrap is actually a number eight, which it'll run a little bit deeper than a number seven or a number five. If I can't get that bait to hit the bottom or hit a stump, then I've, I've not got bid on the shad wrap. It's gotta be digging the bottom for me to get bid on. And that was the case this morning. Uh, and I pulled up on a boat ramp and made five or six casts and caught four fish. And every time that bait had hit, hit that boat ramp. Um, and that's been my key for today. Rusty Transigear has been struggling on this final day. The shallow flat he's had success with during the first three days of the tournament seems to have dried up. But because of the time it takes to get in and out of there, he's been reluctant to give up on it. I've been really been catching two or three right off the bat uh, on a shallow running crankbait. It didn't happen this morning. The water was dead slick. So uh, I changed pretty quickly and picked up a Senko and uh, had two bites pretty quick. Uh, one was my fault, fished poorly. God, me. The other one, they just didn't hold on good. It had a, about a two and a half or three pounder on a spinner bait uh, that came unbuttoned and a keeper on a shallow running crankbait. He barely keeps. Jigs and crankbaits have been the weapons of choice for many of the anglers in this competition. Rusty Seleski has been using a crankbait with success, but it wasn't his first choice. First couple days in practice, I was getting him on a jig. And I, my, uh, my guy I room with, stay with, practice with, Brett Height, he, uh, he was getting one of crankbait. And he only had one of the color he was getting bit on. So he, uh, he gave me this ugly one. I'm like, dude, that is the ugliest crankbait I have ever seen. There's no way a fish is going to bite that thing. But it was the same exact crankbait, just different color, you know? In the last hour and a half of the day, I, uh, I was running some riprap and I caught a three and a half pound spotted bass and a couple nice largemouth and four or five other keepers. So I get, developed a little confidence in it in the last day of practice. I had 18 pounds on this thing in three, four hours. So the ugly crankbait became my favorite crankbait. There's a good one. No, he's not even a good one. Well, there's five anyways. It's not a strong five, but it's a start. It's only uh, it's 10 o'clock. That's about, I've been getting limit by nine or 10 every day. So I guess that's pretty much how I've been doing it. Instead of a crankbait, Andy Montgomery has stuck with a jig for most of his rapid assault on the docks. One small tip when you skipping docks like we've caught most of our fish this week is uh, always use a hand tied jig just because the rubber collar jigs when you skip them a lot of times they slide down and it gets really aggravating. If I make a good cast with a hand tied jig I know my skirt's going to be perfect every time. So I'm using a half ounce shooter lures jig. It's an absolute must that it's a hand tied jig when you're skipping docks. I just kept throwing a little square bill crankbait in the tournament and then the first day I caught a couple threes, second day I caught a five, and third day I caught a three and a five. So it's just pretty much how I fish my tournament. In the final hours of competition, Rusty Seleski continues his charge. Those are kind right there. FLW Outdoors is brought to you by National Guard. Always ready, always there. Chevy Silverado Sweepstakes. Meet the heavier duty, heavy duty. 
The new 2011 Chevy Silverado has been improved in all the places that matter, and it could be yours to win. Go to winasilveradohd.com for your chance to win. Yamaha, reliability starts here. U.S. Bank, proud sponsor of FLW Outdoors. Cabela's, the world's foremost outfitter of hunting, fishing, and outdoor gear. And by Castrol, maximum sludge protection for maximum performance. You don't have to fish like a pro to win like a pro. Make sure to log on to fantasyfishing.com for your chance to win up to $50,000 in cash and prizes. There's just a few hours left to fish here at Lake Norman. Four of the final five have caught a limit and are looking for the big large mouth that make all the difference on this lake. Only Hay Hyra Georgia native Rusty Transigear has yet to catch a limit. The remote flat that's done so well for him in the tournament so far seems to have dried up. Well, I was struggling all morning by 11 o'clock. I was actually uh, debating on whether to leave my area and you know try to go catch maybe seven or eight pounds of spots down the lake. My gut told me to stay. Well, there's my sign to stay. If I was fishing for second, I would have came down and fished more docks and just pitched around and tried to uh, catch seven or eight pounds of spots. But uh, I thought it was the, the, you know, the place to fish to try to win the tournament. This spot's kind of like a good girlfriend. You hate to leave her, but sooner or later, you know you got a dumper. I got over to a couple docks that Yesterday, I caught a three-pounder and lost two three-pounders. I was just winding, winding a little crankbait as fast as I can through the rocks and lay downs and around the corners of docks. Day with the uh, bluebird skies after some rain and stuff, I was really afraid they wouldn't bite, but they did bite halfway decent today. Um, so I'm glad I stuck it out with the crankbait. Small upgrade, but can't complain when you're upgrading. One thing about crankbaits is when you're cranking rocks, especially with a little shallow square bill bait like this, you always want to keep a check on your hooks because it's constantly digging into rocks and snagging and you're popping it free and it'll roll the points back or bend the open them up just a little bit and i bet if i'm doing it a lot i might change sets of hooks five or six times a day i mean just every hour or so just depends on how things are going that's definitely one thing you always need to keep an eye on when cranking shallow rocks and stuff you gotta keep the hooks sharp Last cast right there. Man. Yeah, and after, after I've got my limit of spots on Norman, the key to fishing on Lake Norman in general is you got to have a big large mouth. You know, I had my limit early, decided I was going ahead and go up in the river and try to get that big bite today. And I've been able to do that the last three days of the tournament, catch a limit of spots and run up the lake. And, you know, today I did that and just never got that big bite. They just were not where they were supposed to be and where they have been. That's it. I gotta go. Well, it's been a fairly decent day, actually. We got a limit. At least I get to walk across the stage with my bag full. Today, it wasn't so easy. Uh, I ended up going up to a where I'd been catching some large mouth and without a limit, and I hadn't had to do that all week. And it's tough when you're fishing without a limit in the box, knowing you ain't gonna get many bites. Okay. It worked out this afternoon. I was able to catch five. I don't have a lot of weight, but uh. You know, I was happy to catch five. It was brutal. It was one of the toughest days I fished on Lake Norman by far. 
On the other side of the lake, Rusty Seleski has been slowly and steadily working his two main areas, and his ugly crankbait has so far gotten him two good upgrades. Now his line is snapped and he's not about to leave it behind. Last two days we've had some kind of weather to deal with. Um, clouds, rain, or wind. And any one of those three let those fish get up shallow and feed. There's a good one. So I'm glad I stuck it out with the crank, but it worked out good. Those are the kind right there. Rusty Celeste has the makings of the biggest catch of the day. Will it be enough to topple the leader? Total weight. 13 pounds, four ounces. As time runs out on the competition, the anglers head for blind landing and get ready to head to the weigh-in. Meanwhile, anglers and fans of all ages have been enjoying the FLW Family Fun Zone and Outdoor Expo at the Cabarrus Arena. The hometown crowd here at Lake Norman has a lot to cheer for. Three out of the top five are local favorites. First to the scales is Conover, North Carolina native Brian Travis. He started the day in fifth place and got off to a roaring start, bagging four keepers in his first six casts. But then things ground to a halt, and he wasn't able to pull his early spots with big yard mouth. Eight pounds, 15 ounces, 44.5, not enough to take over the lead, but good enough to move you into second place. Ranger pro Rusty Seleski from Alpine, California has had an amazing tournament. He climbed from 69th place on day one to 17th on day two and all the way to fourth on cut day. Total weight, 13 pounds, four ounces, a new leader, Rusty Seleski. So Seleski has done it. He's clawed his way into the lead from 69th place. Will he be able to hold on with three more anglers to weigh in? Next up is another local favorite, Evan Root Pro, Andy Montgomery. Despite deep experience on Lake Norman, Montgomery struggled to get his limit, and like Travis, was unable to cull many of his smaller spotted bass. He started the day with a two and a half pound lead over Seleski. Will it carry him into the lead? 10 pounds, four ounces, not quite enough. Andy Montgomery, you can stay right here. Hey, Hira, Georgia native Rusty Transigir fished a shallow, hard to reach flat every day of the tournament, which helped him into second place after three days. But it led him down today. He's only weighing in two fish. Two pounds, eight ounces, two, eight. Give him a total of 43 pounds. All together, a great finish. Top five here. Congratulations, super job, Rusty. Appreciate it so much. All eyes are on the hometown hero, Yamaha Pro Brian Griff from Shelby, North Carolina. Fishing primarily jigs and crankbaits, he's held on to the lead since day two, using his style of hitting as many docks in a day as he can. He's weighing a limit today, but he wasn't able to pull as often as Rusty Seleski. Time to see if he can seal the deal. A lot of suspense here. We're not sure whether it's going to be Rusty or Brian. He's got five that we a total of. 12 pounds, 11 ounces, 58.5, your champion, Brian Thrift. This week I've caught every fish I've weighed in. All 20 fish have either come on this Demeke DC-100 crankbait and this half ounce jig. And I'm fishing the jig on docks, skipping under docks, skipping under pontoons where the water's a little bit warmer in the coves. But this crankbait's what I've been getting a lot of my bigger bites on. And I've just been cranking like staging places, little deeper banks in creeks, deeper banks in the pockets and stuff like that. And I've just been trying to cover a lot of water throwing this little crankbait. This jig, it's a custom jig. It's hand tied by one of my buddies named Louis Hull, and actually it's probably the same jig Andy's throwing, same jig Brian Travis is throwing. We're all running docks with it. We're skipping it up under the docks, up under the walkways, under pontoon boats, throwing it in there, letting it go to the bottom, hopping it a few times, reeling it in, making another cast, and that's what you're doing. You're just power fishing with it and covering a lot of water. 
What a decisive victory for the hometown hero. Congratulations to Brian Thrift on his first ever tour win right here on Lake Norman. For more information or on the water footage, go to flwoutdoors.com. Make sure to tune in right here on Versus Country every week for more bass fishing action. Look at that. Yeah.